President Bola Tinubu has received briefings on the status of the crisis in the Nasarawa State House of Assembly, as well as the Niger Delta Development Commission. Also, Femi Bajabi Amila has resumed his role as Chief of Staff to the President after resigning from the House of Representatives. State House correspondent Adesua Omoran reports. As President Bola Tinubu continues his early days in office, he's engaging with various stakeholders across the country. In his meetings today, discussions primarily revolved around security, economy and the political landscape. Two traditional rulers, namely the Emi of Borgu and his counterpart from Kontagura in Niger State, arrived for a meeting with the president. Following a closed-door discussion, the purpose of the visit becomes clear, addressing the present security situation in the state, among other things. We talked about security challenges, which is also confronting the entire nation. And uh, we believe that he's going to do something. We told him what actually is going on in our areas. And we want him to come to our aid. And uh, he has promised he's going to do his best in terms of uh, this security challenge. We congratulate him and also to pray uh, with him as well. And secondly, uh, secondly we discuss about the uh, recent issue of uh, insecurity in our area and uh, roles. That's all. Meanwhile, Governor Abdullahi Sule of Nasr State also pays a visit to the presidential villa, prompted by the recent attacks by bandits and ongoing crisis, where two speakers have emerged in the State House of Assembly. A few days ago, we had almost 20 uh, something people who were kidnapped at the main highway coming to Abuja. But God so kind, we were able to get all of them uh, back. You know, and then um, last week, we got some few expatriates again that were kidnapped. At, our, at their site, you know, between Garoku and Dari. And uh, again, we were able to get all of them out yesterday. You know, so I'm sure Mr. President got his security report that some of those issues uh, came up. And then there was also uh, another problem within the House of Assembly. I think Mr. President wanted to know more about that. So that's what I use the opportunity to brief him what is really happening. Chinubu had earlier in the day met with the managing director of the Niger Delta Development Commission the agents responsible for developing the oil rich Niger Delta region. This marks the president's first engagement with the NDDC. Well, I think uh, just to brief him on the status of my agency and our vision too on what we intend doing to support the administration of Mr. President. At least it's an interventionist agency, so at least just intervening on the development of the region. So we have different programs. The most important is that these programs must also be in line with Mr. President's vision. So he has asked us to do certain things and get back to him. So <clears throat> once we put that together, we'll get back to him again. Amidst the country's anticipation of the potential effect of food deregulation of the downstream oil sector and the removal of petrol subsidies, the group CEO of the state-owned company, NNPC Limited, also pays a routine visit to the president. It's a routine. We briefed the Mr. President of a critical national engagement that the NNPC does on behalf of Nigeria and Nigeria. And we're happy that Mr. President is abreast of what we're doing. In other news, Femi Bajep Yamila has officially resumed his role as the chief of staff to the president. He was warmly received by senior staff in the villa. Adesua, Omoran, Arise News. Also, President Bola Tinubu has approved the indefinite suspension from office of Abdul Rashid Bawa as the chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to allow for proper investigation into his conduct while in office. A statement released from the office of the secretary to the government of the federation explains that the move follows weighty allegations of abuse of office leveled against him. Bauer has been directed to immediately hand over the affairs of his office to the Director of Operations in the Commission, who will oversee the affairs of the Office of the Chairman of the Commission pending the conclusion of the investigation. The suspended EFCC Chairman last night honoured an invitation by the Department of State Services hours after he was asked to stay off work indefinitely by President Bola Tinubu. A lot to talk about this morning. Yeah, a lot to talk about. Uh, things pretty much have panned out. President Tinubu uh, is meeting with key people, you know, in the country. Uh, we had some traditional rulers that came to talk about insecurity. And we must also talk about insecurity because insecurity has grown massively, you know, in this country over the years. And it's very, very sad what has happened. 
Uh, one of the things that disturbed the prospect of a nation is insecurity. I mean, that's why the Emir of Bogu was there to talk about insecurity and also, you know, to pray with the president and wish him a good term and all of that. And I think it is incumbent on the president to be able to set up, you know, how he's going to do things as regards insecurity in this country. He said he's going to reject the architecture. It remains to be seen. We are waiting on that. The earlier he kicks off, the better it is for him. He iterated a couple of ideas during his campaign. He talked about, uh, you know, the Rangers and things like that, improving the size of the, you know, the forces and all of that. It remains to be seen because the time is ticking. At least in the first couple of years, we need to be able to nip insecurity in the board and allow people to re return to their lives and livelihoods. Other things happening there, uh, Femi Bajabi Amila Fali taking office, congratulations to him. He did resign from the National Assembly. He's been in the National Assembly for about 20 years, if my memory serves me right, uh, representing Sura Liri constituency. So what that means is that there has to be another election, the by-election, in Sura Liri to get somebody to you know, represent Sura Liri in the Federal House. So Femi Bajabi Amila has transited from the National Assembly you know, to the presidency proper. And let's see, we can only wish him the very best, you know. But like we say, that he should make, you know, doing his work effectively and the interest of Nigerians, you know, topmost priority in his heart when he does his work. I wish him a lot of work. You can only wish people well when they start a new venture. Abdul Rashid Bawa, I'm very iffy about the way we remove EFCC buses in this country. Because when you look at the antecedents, there's always a storm that makes somebody leave the office. We remember the case of Magu, that we also set up the just Ayo Salami led panel. Till today, we have not seen what came out of that panel. All right, that was I was suspended, tried to the panel. We didn't see anything that come out of it. I don't subscribe to media trial. Nigerians that you told that they have witty allegations of, uh, against them should be able to know what truly happened. Because we don't want the case of just, you know, allegations and allegations, and it goes into thin air. So Nigerians may be able to know what has happened, as regards this, I will must follow this to a logical conclusion. But it goes back to that narrative that what really happens is the case is when people are done with you, they're done with you. I didn't see Bauer playing any big role in this administration as the FCC chief any longer. So it was just time to get rid of him. And that's why the cycle always continues. And it's not only Bauer. As at with what happened with Emefile, as at with what happened with Adiza Balausman, you're suspended, you never get reinstated. It's over for you, it's over for you. But those weighty allegations, Nigerians have to know. Because till date, we don't know what happened at the end of the Justice Ayah Salami led panel. Okay. <clears throat> Abdul Rashid Bawa, EFCC chairman, met with the president yesterday. And shortly after, he um, was suspended from office. And the director of operations was asked to take over that office. And then later development indicated that the Department of State Services had invited him for questioning. The statement issued by Willie Bassey, Director of Information, um, uh, indicated that, well, there have been petitions against the ESCC chairman and there will be investigation into his conduct in office. Some vague, open-ended uh, kind of uh, statement. But what is important is that nobody can jump to any conclusions except when it is clear what the outcome of that investigation is by the DSS. And we're hoping that he will not be detained unnecessarily for a long time. His rights should be respected. The only indication here is just that it's a reminder, it's a subtle reminder that there's nobody in this country that is above the laws of the land and you can be investigated. I, I saw a story about one governor going to court and saying uh, you should not be investigated. No, there is no such thing. Even if you are a governor, once you leave office, you have uh, lost your immunity. The whole idea of Section 308 is, to, is for you not to be disturbed or distracted uh, while you are occupying that office. But anybody uh, can be investigated. Uh, that's just about it. So I know, you know, before you know it now, on social media, people will start all kinds of speculation about why, you know, uh, the chairman of EFCC is being investigated. I think everybody should just be calm. Nobody should engage in any kind of uh, speculations. But in any case, President uh, Tumbu, under Section 5 of the Constitution, has a right to choose those that he wants to work with. So he can hire, he can fire as he deems fit. So it comes to the territory. Secondly, the uh, meetings that he had yesterday, it's also part of the uh, business 
uh, for him to consult with people, to take briefings from people. Security, yes, it's a major challenge. It remains a major challenge. We had a retired uh, military head of state who was president for eight years. He could not solve the problem. So the problem is that it was a major campaign issue, not just with the APC and President Tinubu, but with all the other candidates uh, in, in that uh, 2023 general election. So it's not surprising that two traditional rulers from Niger State, the Emir of Bogu and the Emir of Kuntangura, have gone to him to report to him about security challenge in, in Niger State. The governor of Nasarawa also met with him to also tell him, look, there are issues in Nasarawa. In Nasarawa, just last week, two expatriates uh, were abducted. So, but it's all over the, the, the country. So it's something that the administration has to deal with. And one of the things the president did upon our Zooming office is to tell the security chiefs that he expects from them better synergy in terms of how to deal with the crisis of security uh, in the country. And so this is the evidence now uh, that he's beginning to uh, take briefings from concerned stakeholders in that regard. He also met yesterday with the uh, uh, group CEO of NMPCL, uh, Mele Kiare. Well, that is also understandable. Uh, we have uh, issues with the uh, first subsidy remover, what is being done. And then he also met with a uh, former uh, um, MD of the, uh, of the uh, NDDC and the current MD of the NDDC. That's uh, Alaibe and Obuku. He also met with Dakuku Peterside, who used to be in charge of uh, Nemasa. So in all of that, you know, fact-finding, uh, the work has started. Somebody told me that Tinubu is not just hitting the ground running, he is already flying. Wow. Okay, well, we see that he's been very active in the last two weeks. As for Bajabi Amila, I was a bit uh, disturbed when I saw him, uh, you know, at the election of the new uh, speaker. Uh, but of course, that probably was his last day in that position because I, I was afraid that was he going to combine two, of, uh, two assignments. So now the people of Suruleri constituency in Lagos will have to vote for another person to replace him. But that responsibility, uh, that responsibility that he has is a big responsibility. He's the gatekeeper. He's the engine room of the presidency. Well, his experience, he's been in parliament for 20 years. He's been speaker, managing over 300 uh, of his colleagues uh, in the House of Rest. It shouldn't be so difficult for him to bring to that job that requires a lot of maturity, a lot of emotional intelligence, a lot of coordination that, that is required. And, you know, we hope that he will also, uh, you know, be attentive enough to reduce the burden on the president because he has to clear the memos. And I hope that he will help the president to operate an open door policy because the chief of staff can get so carried away, he will start blocking people, he will start playing uh, uh, unnecessary politics. But being a politician, part of his job, in fact, the bigger part of it, is to make friends for the president and to be the eyes and ears of the president and to run a disciplined, effective office of intelligent people who can reduce the burden uh, of the president's work. Well, I'm sure he has enough experience. Uh, that's why uh, President Tinubu has chosen him uh, for that role. He's having a good run, excellent career in the public space, from being speaker to becoming chief of staff. Congratulations to him as he assumes office. Yes, indeed. Congratulations, Sonobu Femi Bajabi Amila, the Chief of Staff to the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. As has already been said, a number of briefings happened yesterday, and this has been uh, the itinerary of the President in the last few days, having assumed office on the 29th of May 2023, where he, of course, as you would imagine, taking on the new um, office to have meetings with critical stakeholders the content of which has primarily been security and the economy. A few um, outcomes from some of these briefings, perhaps, or these investigate or these um, talks have been suspensions of some principal officers. Over the weekend, we heard the story of the governor of the CBN, uh, Central Bank of Nigeria, and yesterday, of course, news broke about the suspension of the uh, chair of the of the EFCC. Now, that's not a surprise because Abdul Rashid Bawa himself took over, took over after a similar incident with the former. Uh, um, EFCC boss Ibrahim Magu, where he was also under investigation for corruption. As has been mentioned, 
when we when an investigation is instituted against a public officer, there should we should see a conclusion in terms of the end because. After the case was closed against Ibrahim Magu, he had come out to say that it was corruption fighting back against him. Therefore, he insinuated that he was targeted because of the way he was fighting corruption, hence why he was suspended uh, you know, under, the, um, um, under the guise of corruption. We want to understand the reason for the suspension post the investigations. Of course, there have been um, accusations on, on, of corruption allegations against the um, EFCC chair. We remember Matawale saying that he had, you know, he had been involved in some corruption. And so this would come under the investigation by the DSS. What Nigerians are looking forward to is not just headlines, news about another suspension, but in both cases, the CBN governor and the EFCC boss a detailed report of the investigation we deserve to know, and if found guilty, a follow-up in terms of a prosecution. That's what we're looking forward to. Now, in terms of the Nasarawa state issue, um, the Nasarawa state governor, um, Governor Abdullah Isule, meeting with the, with the president, it's a tale of two speakers beyond the report on the security situation in Nasarawa state. So what's happened is that we've had two speakers emerge in the State House of Assembly in Nasara State. We've had Balare, Balarabe Abdullahi and Daniel Ogazi, who have said they've in, both, in different elections, one happening in the, in the State House of Assembly and the other happening in a local government office, and one of them being sworn in, and the president wanting to find out what's happened. Of course, uh, perhaps the governor of Nasara State to borrow a leaf or two from the president himself, who would have to manage what could have you know, emerged as that in the, in the National Assembly, but was able to manage it politically. Perhaps he would get some, um, in, um, some advice from there. But very critical in terms of what happened in Nasarawa is the involvement of the state police whereby the police stepped in on the orders, apparently, of the governor to seal the House of Assembly following what happened in the House. And there had been protests at the first headquarters of the Nassau State um, Police Force. And what the Nassau indigents and residents are saying is that the police should hand off political matters and indeed should be apolitical. It would be, um, we would like to find out what would happen at the end of the day, who would be announced as substantive speaker of the House in Nassau State and see if that would be resolved and the police can indeed be independent in matters of state and political issues.